All right, guys, here in the lab again at, at Western Armor Tech today. This is pretty cool. We've had an opportunity. We're in an uh, electrical class, and, or ignition class, I should say, and then a uh, fuel systems class. So we have this uh, fuel pump. It's off a of VF750, right? And uh, it wasn't functioning at all. We had melted wires, a burned up uh, relay. So one of the things we want to do is just verify if the fuel pump actually is working at all or has the output. As soon as we put jumper wires to this on the motorcycle, it had nothing. I mean, it just didn't do a thing. It was like it was just completely dead. Most manuals at that point are going to tell us, just put a new one in it. They're going to say this is bad. we got to think something burned up the relay, right? And we have wiring problems and everything else. We really want to pinpoint this one thing at a time. Even though most manuals won't show this, very few, if any, will show this, um, we know some tricks that we could take and disassemble the fuel pump. All we did is take this apart. I didn't even have the right file that I wanted here. It has a little set of points in here. I don't know if you, you're probably not going to be able to get in here with the camera, but it's literally just like a little set of points, just like we have in points and condensers, okay? Uh, we read the manual in here of how this works. It makes contact. Once it reaches its maximum point, it loses contact. It breaks on the pivot, causing the cycle to repeat itself, and this sits and fluctuates. There's a diaphragm on the bottom side of this, so we have a fuel in. And when we press that diaphragm down, that's going to press fuel out the fuel valve. There's probably a check valve in here, too. When you have a problem with this, per Honda, for example, there's no replacement parts. It's just buy a new fuel pump. And this was what? $150. And does this guarantee that the rest of the bike's going to be fixed? No. No, it really doesn't because we've got you know other issues. But by taking this apart, putting it back together, we've actually got it to function here. What we're going to do is the... When, it, when you have a functioning fuel pump, but you're afraid that you're not getting enough to the float bowls, they have a test that we could take, run this into a graduated beaker. We're supposed to run it for five seconds, take what we get out of here and multiply it times 12, and then match it up to the service manager. Do you know what the output's supposed to be? Uh, 22 fluid ounces. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, try it here. Ready? 1,000, Pretty cool. So uh, that spec's throwing me off a little bit here. I'm going to just set this down. That's the and they're saying that... That's an angle. Yeah, What's that? Yeah, yeah, an angle. Angle. Good call. You guys rock. We must not be part of a community college training program. <laughs> we have here around 3 ounces. Let's take 3 times 12. 36. And the minimum's what, 22? 22. How would you say this fuel pump is? So 150, and we're not done. Tomorrow I'll grab from home, I've got a points file, and we can really dress those contacts up. But do you think that with enough current, what you guys learned about electricity so far, with enough current, do you believe that those contacts actually welded themselves together? If they welded themselves together and they can't make and break, that's why the fuel pump was physically locked up. And when we put our jumper on there, what was actually starting to happen? You remember? Yeah, it was smoking. I mean, we put our jumpers on there, and it was smoking. The other thing I want to stress, and I know we've got uh, a ton of subscribers that have started subscribing to our channel between dealers and vendors and, and uh, people out there just trying to learn things. When you watch what we do here at WIT, want to close that up for me, look at how we have our, our station set up here. We're using a remote switch. We're not just directly connecting to a battery. And the other thing that we have is we have a fused jumper cable. Okay, I mean, those are just some good things to be a little bit safer about it. And this is exactly, oh, look at that. Didn't I say ask Terry? The <laughs> oldest guy in the class. I said, I said, let's go ask Terry if he has a points file because that old, that old guy's probably worked on enough points in his life. He probably has one. So we'll, we will dress these up. But what I want you guys to think about the way that we duplicate things here, you guys are doing this all the time, is we're taking and trying to duplicate a motorcycle, right? Every motorcycle out there should have a fuse, right? And then every control circuit has some type of switch. Make sense? So, you know, you guys already have this in your toolkit. You guys in your electrical class, some of you made some leads. I'd, I'd recommend to take these few, uh, you know, $3 jumper wire and a fuse on there. And uh, this is how you would actually just, you know, test a fuel pump for its output. We have, what, one and a half times the minimum. I think you just saved yourself 150 bucks. Cool? All right. That's it for today. So that pump itself can actually get weak, though, right?